I uh, I received a lot of requests for for a noodleless triple tail. So I contacted Brian Goulet and I said, "My man," he said, "My man," I said, "My man," I need a noodleless triple tail. He said, "Secret handshake, boom," and I have a triple tail. So here's the pen. Here's the box. I'm going to show you the parts of the pen. I will do a writing sample and I will tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go with the Noodler's Triple Tail. There's one thing that I have always really enjoyed about Noodler's and that is that the boxes are incredibly simple and if you don't want to keep them you can recycle them and throw them out and do whatever you want. This is not a massive box. You buy a pen, not a box. I Listen, I understand if you're a collector you want a super fancy box but I'm a user. I don't care for shoe size boxes lined with Persian velvet or whatever, like I, I do not care. So I really appreciate this. And there is that, what, oh, it's all in, crumpled up on the other side. There we go. There is the little pen condom it comes in and then there is the I'm sorry about the noise. I'm sorry. I can't do this any quieter. Uh, here we have a little information pamphlet on how to fill with, uh, I'm pretty sure, Nathan Tardif's handwritten artwork, which I think is really neat because it turns into the triple tail. Okay, triple tail. It's, it's a joke. Ha ha ha! Okay. And then on the other end, um, you have all the parts so you can see what's in there. Also, how to reassemble it if you struggle a bit with that. Uh, here we have the... 308 reloadable cartridge and I don't have one Goulet was out but at some point I'm gonna pester them for a couple so I can review that as well um, but, but of course when you're out you're out so there is that uh, you could use the uh, this self the, what they call the, the self-filling unit which works very well and uh, and that's pretty much it I'm I would be surprised if you cannot eyedropper this but anyway, there you have it. Let's look at the pen. So here we have the pen. I will zoom in a bit for you. Of course, I forgot to take out my comparison pen, but here is the Red Deer Museum and Art Gallery. Very standard ballpoint, so that should give you a bit of an idea. The, the Triple Tail is not a small pen. I, uh, I found a very comfortable size, actually. So what do we have? We have this finial, and something I really like about this finial, that's not, that's not to be underestimated, is that it is polished as clearly as the cap and the inside of the barrel. Often you see that these finials are a bit cloudy or like they're just less polished, but this finial is not, which I think is nice. It adds to a very consistent overall look for this pen. Then we have the famous Noodless ink clip, uh, which is very, very springy, very easy to use. I do think I can bend this out of shape um, because it is it is quite quite easily uh, operated, but it hasn't happened. Then we have this center band. The center band says Noodler's Ink in a nice little engraving, and that's it. And then we have this barrel tapers down. You can see the ink filling mechanism, whatever you choose to use, whether it's 308 refillable cartridges, whether it's this two pump, I'm sorry, what do they call it? I have a name for it. I keep forgetting what I think. The two stroke self-filling unit, yes, because you, it's very simple. I'll, I'll, I won't demonstrate it, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that in just a second. The cap unscrews, and then you have the pen. First thing I would like to point out is the very comfortable section in my mind, a bit of a, a change from the Ahab, which had that sort of step down section. Uh, this. Uh, hourglass shaped section I find much more comfortable to me it's just a very very comfortable pen and I really like that the nib is of course steel it is a three tined nib I will put pictures on the website as always and an ebonite feed that is great that means you can heat oops that means you can heat set it uh, you can modify it much more easily than uh, plastic feed 
if you want to, etc. Okay, on the barrel, it says Noodles Ink Company. Barrel unscrews. Again, I would be surprised if you cannot just eyedropper this, but I haven't read if anyone had done it. I, I would be surprised because you could you could eyedropper an Ahab. I don't see why not. Just a bit of silicon grease there. Anyway, it's not in the manual as far as I could tell. Here I have this two-stroke self-filling unit. It's very simple. It has a breather hole in there. Uh, sorry, a breather tube in there. Be a little careful, but it's very simple. You put it in the ink. You push this down. You pull it out. You push this down. You pull it out, and you have. A fill that is, I would say, pretty much full. There's always a little bit of an air bubble, but almost full. If you really want to fill it to the brim, and you think that's a good idea, then you could unscrew this, take a syringe, fill the whole thing with ink, then this part fills up as well, this fills up, all that's good. The only issue is, as I said, there's a breather tube in there, which would no longer stick out above the ink level, and I think that might hamper your ink flow a little bit. But theoretically, if it is that important to you to have that much ink, then you could, and of course, I drop of the barrel. Okay, so, there you have it. Those are all the parts of the pen. Can you post it? You can post it. And then you have a really big pen, but you can post it. Now, let's see how it writes. I have to be honest, my last experience with noodles was a couple of Nippon sets that were finicky to say the least, come back to that, so I was a little nervous to put this to paper, but lo and behold, I was very pleasantly surprised. Now, I will say, I did use, uh, so the nib, yeah, that it's just their, their standard uh, three-tine uh, triple tail nib, uh, the ink is Konpeki by Iro Shizuku, and the reason I chose that is that it's a lubricated ink. Having said that, it writes, and as you can see, I haven't done anything, I haven't primed this before the video, I used it last, I think about two days ago. It's a nice, wet writer, no issues. The nib is not particularly smooth. I don't find this the smoothest nib I have ever used by a long, long shot. Um, but I will take a nib with some feedback that writes consistently over a super smooth nib that skips. So, not a criticism, just telling you what, what to expect on the basis of this one nib that I have. Okay, fast writing. Nobody would write that fast, but the ink flow keeps up very well. Again, it's a wet writer, and when I say wet, uh, I, I don't want you to underestimate what I'm saying. So, let me talk to you for just a few seconds as we kind of let this ink dry a bit, alright? That was a couple seconds, let's do a couple more seconds. When I say wet pen, I do really mean a wet pen, that ink is still wet, okay? So if I would have done that immediately, very, very wet. But none of that's what you're really interested in, is it? I know what you're really interested in. What you're really interested in is seeing the flex. Okay, let's have flex. So, the nib, without pressure, is a little stub-like. So, there seems to be a somewhat broader downstroke than side stroke, which makes sense three times. It is a somewhat rectangular bit of tipping there. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to hold back. More pressure. I'm not slowing down either. I will say I find that very impressive because that was not slowed down. Again, I have not primed the feed. I used this thing last, I think, I'm not even sure it was yesterday, maybe the day before yesterday. And it keeps going and going and going and going and going. Yes, there is some railroading, but with actual flex writing, you would slow down, right? So this is impressive. And I've been fiddling with this pen for a long time. When I say fiddling, I just mean writing. I haven't, I haven't adjusted anything. Out of the box is how it wrote. I did clean it well with some dishwashing detergent and water before I inked it up, but that's a wise thing to do anyway. But it wrote like this straight out of the box. Now, if we do some flexi writing... I 
I cannot but say I'm impressed. So very, very, very interesting. I think what we need to do next is talk about what I like and what I dislike. Let's do that now. When you are a reviewer, then that's a complicated job. Reviewing is a complicated profession. I had to. And here's why. This really is an exercise in trying to be as objective as you can be, and you can never be objective, you just can't. You, nobody can extirpate their own feelings and sensations to such an extent that they are completely objective. If they would be completely objective, then they would say, this is a pen, it has a nib, it has a cap, it has a clip. Like, that's not, that's not I think, what you're here for in a review. You also want to hear what someone feels. And Noodlers is a brand that initially I was quite fond of and that I've had some bad experiences with, both with pens that simply could not be made to write even with hours of tinkering. They could not be made to write with the heat setting, with the chewing, with not possible. So they ended up in the bin. And I've also had some bad experiences with inks. Some of their inks destroyed pens I owned. But having said that, the, the, the challenge lies in trying to put all that away and looking at a product with fresh eyes. So I have really tried to do that for this review because every product deserves fair treatment. And what can I say? Well, there's a couple of things that I, I, I admit I really love about the triple tail. I didn't think I would, but I did. So first of all, it writes, which is a positive, I would say. If you buy a fountain pen, it's kind of nice if it writes, and I cannot say anything but it writes, and it writes very well. It does exactly what it's advertised to do. It has the flex, it has a good ink flow, and I love it. I am super happy that it does. So this is amazing, and I hope that there will be many more noodles pens that write with this quality, because that's superb. Another thing that I wanted to point out is I find the section very comfortable. The old Ahabs, if you remember, had that sort of step-down thing. It's a little bit like Leonardo has that kind of shape too, if you've seen those. It's not that it's not comfortable, but I find this more comfortable. Now, this is very subjective, right? That would not be the case for everyone, but I find this very comfortable. The, the pen fits very naturally in your hand. It's a nice size. The section works really well. And I think it's it's very pleasant, very pleasant, very comfortable pen to hold and to write with. Another thing, and this is one of the major benefits of Noodlers that I have always really appreciated about Noodlers, you can disassemble a Noodlers pen without any tools. And it's the same thing here, so I will do a disassembly line at some point. You can take everything apart, you can put silicone grease wherever you want, you can replace O-rings if you have to, everything is accessible. No special tools, no toolkit that you have to buy, nothing, just your hands, and you're fine. And that is impressive. And I would love it if all pen manufacturers did that, but that's a whole different matter. Nice wet line, good line variation, pen that can be disassembled, $55, I think is a fair price for this pen, given how it performs. Is there anything I don't like about it? Not a whole lot. You have to look at what a pen is, what price it's sold for, and I think for this price it ticks all the boxes it's supposed to tick. What I will say is, for the love of God, the smell, um, it's much better than in the older pens. Because in the older pens, if you would open the little box, it could be overwhelming. It was very pungent. And I'm serious, I've had like, I've had colleagues I shared an office with ask me, what's that smell? I I'm serious, when using a noodles pen. This pen smells a lot less. I would say a factor 10 to 15 of less, just less smell. It's much, much, much less pungent, and I can see how in time the smell will disappear completely. So that is fantastic. It's not odor-free, but at this point, 
I have to get this close to smell it. Whereas before with a noodless pen, at arm's length, you could smell it. So, it's not really a negative, but it's something I would point out, there is that. Having said that, um, are there other issues? Yeah, I could say that you get some ink on the inside of the cap. Yeah, it's a clear cap. What do you expect? Every pen will do that. There is no inner cap that I can discern. So that's that's just how this pen works. So you're gonna get some ink on the in, inner cap. Yeah, yeah. Like the same thing with all clear pens. I don't I don't think I can list that as a negative. That's if something is clear, you tend to be able to look through it. That's kind of the point of it being clear, isn't it? So if there's a little bit of ink uh, flickage going on, then you will you will see that. That's it. Okay, I hope this was useful. A very kind thank you to Brian Goulet for sending me two of these pens. I really appreciate it. Uh, one I will go to Aziza. Aziza will review it too. So watch for her review as well. That's it. I hope this was useful and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.